All right, hey guys, Jason here. Today we're gonna talk about, real quick, I'm gonna show you an example, the beauty of front and rear lockers and also having 35 inch tires. So you see this track right here, okay? I've already been through here, these are mine, okay, coming through here, but this is pretty nasty. Um, you could try to high center it. Um, I didn't, I don't want to wreck this trail, but look at this. You can see it's pretty ugly. Matter of fact, we're going to pull that stick out of there. It looks like somebody got stuck in here before. I didn't notice that when I came through it first, but I mean, and it's not that you couldn't get through this with most trucks. Okay. Most trucks will definitely be able to get through this, but the beauty of it is, is I don't have to worry. See where I'm at out here. I'm, I'm a solid 15 miles, 15 or 20 miles away from getting help from anybody. And I have zero cell phone service. So when you start thinking about things like this, even though it's not that ridiculous, you start looking at it and you start thinking, well, that could be a real mess to try to get through. If I get stuck in there somewhere or hang up or get high centered on this when my front wheels drop into here, my back ones are in there. If I get high centered on here, I'm stuck. I'm in real trouble. Um, so have, and you can see how deep this really is. Okay, so having front and rear lockers and having the kind of ground clearance you get with 35s definitely gives you a little bit of peace of mind. I'm going to set the camera up here real quick and we are going to drive through it and let you see it real world. All right, now obviously we could also, like I said, we could, we could slam it through here real quick with pretty much any vehicle. Sorry, you're going to see some mosquitoes on the lens. But we could drive through here fast and hop our way through with momentum, but then we risk breaking things. The beauty of the lockers and the ground clearance, we can crawl through it without any issue. So let's... All right, you see how simple and controlled that was, okay? No having to hurt my vehicle, no damage in anything. And again, not that most trucks wouldn't have made it through there somehow. Um, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that if you don't know, and I just been through here. It's my first time through here. I went that way and then coming back. But I don't know what that is. I don't know how bad that is. I don't know nothing. Like I said, you saw a stick in there probably from somebody trying to get unstuck once before. And being miles away, the confidence level that I get by having a uh, having front and rear lockers and having 35-inch tires for that over 12 inches of ground clearance just makes stuff like this an absolute breeze. Um, and I, I don't have any fears or worries. Now, had I been too much for my truck... Um, or if I was driving my Tacoma and I would have got stuck in here, something like that, which this is very, this I would not have drove through with my Tacoma. I wouldn't have done it. Um, I, and I wouldn't have tried to high center over here because the middle would have been so soft anyway too, but no offense, but I wouldn't do it. That thing only had 32 inch tires. It had 10 inches of ground clearance, which was not bad, but it had 32 inch tires and a rear locker only. And I wouldn't have risked it with this again because of the circumstances. Had I been out here with a buddy, I'd have went through it with the Tacoma all day long, given the fact that I'm out here by myself in the middle of nowhere literally miles and miles i'm talking a solid 10 miles before somebody's gonna find me and i'm not joking about that very deep in a georgia swamp here um I, I would not want to risk that given the fact that i knew this truck was capable with the front and rear lockers and the ground clearance i had no issues whatsoever and i could take my way through had i even got stuck i have means to be able to get me out of this okay not only do i have a saw in there where i have a shovel i have a saw i have traction boards i also have um extra toe straps where i could have locked right onto my wheel the beauty of this jeep is look at these see how these rims are so big and open Okay, got this open space in here. Okay, I could have locked onto my rims. And what I could have done then is I could have had a strap on there and I could have hooked them together and used my power of my lockers to let the strap wrap around the wheel and pull me literally. It would climb, the strap would go to connect it out here to a tree. They would come together. I got a video about this on my other channel. I'll put a link to it in here for you. I'll cut and paste it in here for you. So it's a very simple, easy process. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set it up, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we have it set up. You can see I got a strap wrapped right around here, fed through the wheel, and tucked back on itself like that. Just goes through there. Just make sure you're not putting that on the valve stem. Okay, you don't want to break your valve stem off. But I got that strap on that side. Comes back there, meets there. Have this strap on this side. Again, watching the valve stem, centered out perfect on the wheel. This is going to drive over itself and pull that around and back itself up. So I got those on there. Those are set. They come back. They join to a, uh, a uh, what am I thinking of here? A uh, shackle. 
And then I got them here to a tree strap. I did use another one, a longer one for a tree saver on here and another shackle there. So this is the setup. So when we go and we start to drive, what it's gonna do is it's gonna drive over its own strap is basically the concept here. It's gonna pull right over its own straps and then wheel itself right out of that hole. That's gonna go in reverse, so it's gonna pull those down and under and uh, fish itself out of there. So put you on the tripod, we'll see what it does here. But I could tie off to a tree, run that, and then tie my strap, put a strap right through here, and then connect that strap so it's here. And when I turn my wheels, it will then roll up that strap, and it'll climb the strap and drive me out. So I have a bunch of ways to get me out if I were to get into trouble. The beauty of it is I don't need to use any of that stuff. Front and rear lockers, 35-inch tires, not aired down. I mean, look at the mud on that. I mean, like I said, cakewalk easy to just roll right through something like that, uh, which is, a, you know, a 30-yard stretch of nasty mud. And it, like I said, very impressive. So uh, very, very impressive. It's a good thing to have. Um, and a beautiful thing if you don't have this kind of capability like I said make sure you got the recovery tactics or avoid this like I said if I had my Tacoma I would not have attempted this not out here by myself with a buddy when you got somebody that can recover you something like that that's fine but I would not have done this on my own um, under any circumstances I would not have tried it so uh, with this truck and the capabilities cakewalk I mean, it didn't even blink an eye. I mean, it didn't even spin a tire one time in that. Not one tire spin. It just crawled right through it just beautifully as can be. Love the 35s. Love the front and rear lockers. Love this Jeep Gladiator. Thanks for watching.